Hey guys, welcome to my nighttime routine with ferrets video. Today I'm going to be showing you what I do at night for the ferrets, um, how I prepare their food, um, pretty much all that I have to do for the ferrets at nighttime. And you guys seem to really enjoy these vlog style type videos. So that is what you're gonna get today. And the first thing on my agenda this afternoon is prep my September order of meat for the ferrets. I did order it a little bit early, but it is technically meat for the month of September. And I'm gonna show you how I do that. It's not gonna be much different from my last meal prepping video, but let's get into it. All right, I hope that this looks good. My tools for today is a gross cutting board that I need to replace soon. Um, two pairs of scissors, a sharper one, and then a taller one and my cleaver. I need to replace pretty much all of my prepping stuff, but I just haven't gotten around to it. <laughs> I have a Sharpie and then my um, Ziploc baggies, and then of course my gloves. And we have a lot of duck to portion out today. So I've got duck wings here. did it go? Hello? I have no idea where that piece just went. So the reason that I cut into um, bite-sized pieces is because I have a lot of ferrets and it's just easier to monitor them this way um, because they really do like to stash so it becomes hard to monitor them. Bon appetit dinner. And I'm actually gonna serve it to them early today because I have it ready. And then if they're hungry later, I'm just gonna give them some eggs, a couple eggs, and that should hold them over until tomorrow. And I'm not even gonna label this because I obviously know that they are duck wings because they look much different than chicken wings. Chicken wings are much fatter, I guess. I get a lot of questions about my prepping method that I've been doing. Um, a lot of people have been wondering why I bulk bag things instead of like chopping things up and making perfect little portions. It's because I try to minimize the amount of bags that I use. The max amount of times that I take things out to thaw, take out, and then refreeze is like only one to two times, maybe two at the max. So. There is a little bit of nutrient depletion that occurs when you thaw and refreeze things. It's really not significant at all, like the nutrient depletion that goes on. And I also get asked, how much will this last for your ferrets? And it really depends on what I've been feeding, you know? Sometimes I feed chicken wings with one duck wing. Sometimes I do three duck, you know, it's like different every time. It's really hard to gauge how long something is going to last me. These, as you can tell, are quite big. So I'm going to individually freeze them because I don't think I could fit two in one bag. If I could, that would be cool, but actually, I don't know, it's gonna be tight. Oh, I fit two in this one. Frames are probably one of my favorite um, raw meaty bones to feed just because the ferrets really like them. It contains a fairly good ratio, depending on obviously the way that it was cut. And if it doesn't, you know, that particular piece, if it's too meaty, then I'll add some bone, um, chicken feet, or uh, neck, whatever I have. Okay, so I think you guys get the idea, so I'm going to um, see you guys in a little bit so I don't use up all of my camera battery. If you guys were curious what probably the worst smelling raw meat item that I have ever smelled, definitely pork kidneys. These things smell disgusting. <laughs> like even worse than tripe in my opinion. Hi, Appa! 
I think Appa woke up from the smell and wanted to come check it out. Okay, I gotta finish. Are you gonna let me? Ooh, big yawn. I also ordered lamb tripe from Raw Feeding Miami. This is the last thing that I ordered. And yeah, it is pretty yucky, but um, 2.5 pounds of this stuff lasts me like two, three months, depending on how much I feed. So yeah, this is gonna last the ferrets a very long time. I made a dirt box for the ferrets and they really, really enjoy it, especially Appa. <laughs> he absolutely loves the dirt box. So basically what I used is organic potting soil with no fertilizers. Oh my God, you are a mess. What have you done? Do you mind? Do you mind? This is how she drinks from the bowl. You're silly. They love fresh water. It's like one of their most favorite things. And she loves to try and dump it. Yeah? Are you gonna dump it? Hi, Appa. Yes, Momo, I see you've stashed a lot of the food, huh? You know you could eat it. You know that you could eat it. <laughs> so I'm actually gonna go through and replace all their blankets because if you see, like, look at how dirty this is. And this is just from a couple days of them using it. They just really like this bed, so it's very dirty. Yes. I also need to go and clean out these tubes because they don't smell that great because someone likes to stash in there. You. Oh, she's so cute though, it's hard to be mad at her. I'm going to show you my deep clean process when I clean these bad boys. Um, I got these from Walmart and I love them. Um, I do replace them after a couple months, but <clears throat> I haven't had them that long, so I'm gonna try to get a little bit more use out of them. What did I do last time? I think I just used the sink and then just make sure to really clean it and sanitize after. And I let them soak too in soap and water because they're kind of grody. You should know by now that having ferrets requires a lot of cleaning. <laughs> I have a separate sponge that I use for cleaning, so I have a separate sponge for their meat. I have a sponge for the people food dishes, and then I have a normal cleaning sponge. bad boys are going to sit here and soak for a long time and I'm actually going to just hand wash these cubes because it's just easier that way but the tubes are what they use the most to stash their food and toys and stuff like that so um, it's a lot dirtier. Get out of there! I have to clean! Excuse me! Oh yeah, and this is just vinegar and water that I use. Vinegar and water is safe for ferrets to be around. If I was using any other cleaner, I wouldn't be letting Momo climb all over my stuff. But because it's vinegar and water, it is safe. Yeah, I cleaned it. Are you gonna get it all messy again? 
Okay, so I know that this looks bad. This was what was in the tube that I just dumped out before cleaning it. So I'm going to do a thorough sweep and then eventually I'm going to get the mop out. I have to replace the bedding on that bed. <laughs> Also, I think I had some comments on my apartment tour video about my salt lamp and how it's dangerous if the ferrets were to get to it. And um, I had it on the second level, but rest assured you guys, they never ever touched it. They couldn't, they can't even climb up to the second level. Um, I wouldn't have it out if I knew that it was dangerous for them and that they would get hurt. But yes, in general, salt lamps you know if they figure out that it's salty they will start to lick it and they can become dehydrated very quickly it has happened to a couple cats so something to keep in mind but trust me you guys anything that you see in my apartment i have put it there on purpose and i know if it's dangerous you know if they're gonna get into you, you know what i'm trying to say yes he is just one big yellow fluff ball. That'll do. Okay, so next up on the agenda, I just mopped all out in the kitchen. Um, we are going to vacuum, vacuum and then mop in here, um, play with the ferrets a little bit, whoever is awake, and yeah, finish up the rest of my chores. I usually write all of my chores down for the day and the night. Yeah, it sounds like a lot of work, but it really doesn't take too much time, so time to vacuum. I have to leave at 8.15 um, to go pick up Brian from work. So I'm going to take the rest of this time to enjoy the peace and quiet. Sorry, Brian, but it's kind of nice when you're at work. <laughs> Kidding. Um, so I'm going to find something to eat and read a book and just chill out. Today I am reading Veterinarian's Guide to Natural Remedies for Cats. Uh, safe and effective alternative treatments and healing techniques from the nation's top holistic veterinarians. And it's written by Martin Zucker. I kind of wanted to have a little chit chat about something that I was going to make a post on, but um, I just haven't gotten around to doing it. And I know that um, when you look at my Instagram account, uh, the Mindful Mustelid, feeding raw looks really overwhelming and I'm super aware of that. Sorry, my window's open. I include a lot more variety than probably the average person does, just because I can, so I do. But you don't have to do as much variety that I do, and I think it my pictures might make it seem a little overwhelming, uh, feeding raw, when the truth is... One of the biggest mistakes I think that new raw feeders make when first starting out is just overthinking everything, making things much more difficult than they actually need to be. I think that that's like the biggest um, issue that I see and I think that's why some people stop feeding raw because it, they just feel so overwhelmed and they don't know if they're doing the right things, um, don't know if they're providing the right balance and whatnot. But Really, one of my biggest tips 
for people interested in raw feeding is to just take a step back, breathe, you're gonna be okay, you're not gonna hurt your ferret. Granted, you're doing your proper research. Definitely something that I did when I first switched Patsu and Howl. I like logged everything, didn't know what I was doing. It was really, really difficult. And then getting Appa and Momo was so much different. I switched them within like two weeks and it was just so much easier. And even back then, I didn't fully understand, back with Appa and Momo, I didn't fully understand that you don't have to freak out over every little thing. You don't have to focus so much on getting everything exactly right in the exact amounts that they need because that's not natural. It's not natural for humans, not natural for our children. Of course, you know, that's what kibble tries to strive to do. It tries to be like a balance in every sitting. Everything is exactly what the animal needs when that's not necessarily the case at all. And as long as you're providing enough variety of different animals and you're doing enough red meats, the diet is going to be pretty complete, as complete as we can get it to be. Um, if you're not feeding whole prey, of course. We don't know all that much about nutrition when it comes to ferrets or even cats or even dogs. So pretty much everything is our best guess, which sounds scary. I know it sounds scary to be taking our pet's health into our own hands, but that's what we do with ourselves and our children every single day. But I just wanted to talk a little bit about that because I know it can feel a little overwhelming. I'm gonna go read my book now, but yeah, I'll see you guys later. Oh. Oh, go, go, go. Tanji wants to play at midnight. It's midnight and Tanji wants to play. Ow. <laughs> Bye-bye. Say bye-bye. <laughs>